It's no secret that the SEC is currently the most superior conference in college football. With dominant programs like Georgia and Alabama, then you have Auburn, LSU, and Florida who have all won a natty in the last 15-ish years. And then you add the fact that they're adding two college football blue bloods in Texas and Oklahoma next year. Considering those things, I really don't see any other conference become a papa over the SEC anytime soon. But that will change today as I'm going to transform the Sun Belt, which as a conference has zero national titles and was created just 20 years ago in 2001, into the top conference in college football. Now to do this, it's two really simple but challenging goals. We need to have a better conference ranking than the SEC, and in that same season, we'll need one of our members to win a national title. But we will have some recruiting challenges, as we won't be able to recruit four-star players until one of our programs makes the playoff, and we can't recruit any five-star talent until one of our programs wins a playoff game. The challenge is daunting, and I've never done anything like it before, but I'm confident I can turn the Sun Belt into the premier conference in college football and win one of their programs a national title. The conference as a whole right now is not really great. The highest overall is like 79 overall South Alabama, I'm pretty sure is another one. Maybe there's not. Yeah, there's not another one. The two teams we're going to take over to start is Georgia Southern Eagles, and then we're going to start as well with Old Dominion because they're two of the lowest overall teams, so we're going to try and get those two programs kicking because I don't want to try and use like five programs at a time to recruit because that would just be way too clustered and confusing, so we're just going to start with Georgia Southern and Old Dominion and get some good players in their roster. Shout out to Coach Pauly Gurgis. I did not think this team would be 2-2 two and two in the Sun Belt. Oh, man. They're 70 overall. They're not very good, but somehow Georgia Southern's a 74 and they're 1-5, so yeah, man. Man, the records are flipped as to what I expected. I really did not think that Old Dominion would win many games. And they already won three, so good for them. I mean, Georgia Southern lost to Central Michigan by 11, Akron by 7. They somehow beat Vanderbilt. I that's just, okay, that doesn't make any sense. They lost to the Bull Group by 20. I mean, they've been killed by everybody else, but they somehow beat Vandy, so they beat the SEC, so good job, Georgia Southern. Recruiting early after Georgia Southern's been okay. I mean, we already have two commits, which is nice. I mean, it's better than zero. And for this video, I can't use the recruiting tool I usually use, so there's not gonna be as many crazy gems like 80s and 90 overalls, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. I just can't have two user coaches and use the recruiting mod at the same time, but the recruiting board early on for Georgia Southern does not look bad at all. I mean, we're in a lead for most of these guys up top, so that's not bad. I mean, our roster is definitely horrid. So getting as many decent players as possible is a good strategy. This week, though, for Georgia Southern, we're playing Georgia State at home. I think that they're rivals or something. So this is a pretty important game. And they desperately need this because they only have one win. Georgia State, do us a favor. Please lose. And for this game against Georgia State, we have nine guys visiting. There's a lot of good players here that probably could start in a couple years here. So yeah, we just need to go out there and try and win. It should help that Corey and Cliff are both on the visit. So both of you, please do some salesmanship. This is not going the way I'd hope to. We're already down seven points. Georgia State's definitely not going to let us win, which sucks, but we just need to try and get a stop. So the keeper, oh yeah, their quarterback is huge. I'm so bad at tackling, and so is our second dad. So, oh gosh. My goodness, dude, this team's offense is horrible, man. We can't even move the ball. We don't even have a single freaking point. Like, Georgia State's only like one overall higher than Georgia Southern, but it does not show, man. This is humiliating. Are you serious? Did he... Like, what? I, it's like, I don't understand it, dude. It's like we're playing against the Avengers, and they're not that much better than us. I don't get it, dude. This team sucks. Like, they're really bad. This game's over. A surprise to no one with an ounce of intelligence. Not a single guy on the visit committed. We only got a plus 150 points for two of them. So, yeah, the visit was not successful. I don't know how you did it, Old Dominion, but you ended up winning Sunbelt Division A at 8-4, and 6-2 in the covers. I don't know how you did it, but Georgia Southern, I don't. also don't know how you went 1-11. and 11. It's a 74 overall when everybody else is around the same overall. Just makes no sense. So the lowest overall team, Old Dominion, wins Division A. Doesn't make any sense, man. As for recruiting for Old Dominion, they lost this Devin Dukes guy to UCLA. I really tried to get him for him because they really needed a punter. So next year, they will have a walk-on because Devin decided to be a jerk. But for the guys we have committed, it's actually not that bad. Good job, Old Dominion. We're doing a pretty good job here. I mean, we got some athletes down here. Hopefully, these guys are pretty high overalls at different positions. But yeah, all in all, we really recruited the trenches and it looks like we did a pretty good job. Unfortunately, for the 1-11 and 11 team, Georgia Southern, and their recruiting class sucks. There's only four commits, and it's my fault because I'm the one recruiting for them. I don't know. Old Dominion's class is so much better. It's a pretty unfortunate situation. I mean, we have a good lead for most of these guys that are left on our board. It's just they didn't commit here. So we have a chance of losing them on the signing day, which I do not want to happen. All right, time for the Sun Belt Championship. We got Southern Miss versus Old Dominion. I don't really think this should be close. Ha, okay. Lee Corso says the D-plus offense, Old Dominion, who's been defying the odds all season long, will win. We shall see. I think it's going to be Southern Miss. I'll be completely honest. And... Wow, it is Southern Miss. Only by four points, though. Old Dominion's like the best 70 overall team I've ever seen in my life, so good job to them. And Old Dominion's in the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl? Why are they... Isn't that like an important bowl, or maybe I'm just a fan of Cheez-Its? I don't really know, but we're playing Ohio, the Bobcats. This might be a win. I don't know. This team's been defying the odds all season long. We'll see. So, Ryan, 
Do over there, Henderson? Oh, I got pancaked. And our safety is lost in no man's land. Gosh dang it, guys. Bad start. Well, we tried getting seven, but that did not happen. Good news is we're gonna get points, but it's only three, so I don't really know how much this is gonna help us. Oh god, our kicker's not great either, but at least got on the board. We're actually keeping it close, man. This team is full of surprises. We're only down two points. Defense, I need you to step up right here. Get a stop. It's another run. Tackle. Nice hit. We're gonna get the ball back. Ha-ha! Alright, shield is off team now, dude. Let's get into field goal range. Let's pull off this massive bull win. Is that field goal range? I think it is. Okay, perfect. Oh, that might be touchdown. Okay, yeah, perfect. Play it smart. I mean, our kicker's not great, so it should be an easy kick up the middle, I think. I mean, he made the other one earlier that was only for 23. This is just one yard extra. Come on. Up and through. One, zero, zero. Yes, let's go! Good job, Old Dominion! Helping out the sub out this year in the bowl season, man. Good job, guys. Good win. I did not expect to win that, but we did. Let's go. So after year one, we're C-plus conference grade, 50th in average ranking. So yeah, we definitely have a long way to go. Looks like the Pac-12 had a really good year, but the SEC's right behind them. Old Dominion's players is even this Jason Henderson guy, so this is why they were so good. They had this beast to the middle of defense. That makes sense now. And they have three guys transferring. Not good, because all these guys would have been quality players down the road, so. So that is very, very bad. How many guys do they have graduating, though? Eh, it's a decent amount. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, it's actually a good amount of guys. So that is not good. For Georgia Southern, they have 27 guys graduating. I don't know how this team was so sucky this year. I still just, I'm flabbergasted by it. It doesn't make any sense, especially with all the veterans they had on it. But the good news is their coach didn't get fired. So I don't have to reset his uh, skills and stuff like that. So that's nice. But yeah, all these guys sucked. Things just don't make any sense. Georgia Southern just lost 27 guys graduation. They have no transfers. But all Dominion, it doesn't make any sense. Old Dominion is going in the right direction. Georgia Southern is not so far. Neo Avery, Kendall Bannister, Adonis Williams, two guys from Ohio. That's kind of cool. I mean, these three guys will be really good players down the line, so I can't complain, but I can not complain about Georgia Southern not getting a single guy. Oh, that's really bad. Saturday days here, and for Old Dominion, it's really not that stressful. They have like a really big lead for most of these guys, except for Stan Bernard. We're putting 3,000 to him, but for everybody else that we're putting just 1,000 points into, we should be able to get, I mean, I feel fairly confident we should get every single guy we're going after unless one of these teams just goes all out for one of these recruits, which I don't think they should because they're not that great, but maybe they will. We'll see. And then for Georgia Southern, it's not that cut and dry. Now, there are better players left on the board, like higher overalls, but it's not a guarantee we're going to get all these guys. The good news is we're leading for most of them, so, I mean, we should be able to get all of them if we get lucky, but let's be honest. With how things are going for Georgia Southern, I expect the absolute worst. Well, we did not get Stan Bernard, who we tried to get. Anybody else that we tried to get that we did not end up getting? No, but we got everybody else that we went after, so that's a W. This is class honestly really stinking good so that makes this the class for old dominion and it's honestly just really good for a first year class like i'm not upset with it at all especially considering where this program's at like this team's only a 70 overall like some of these guys could start year one but i'm not gonna let them i'm gonna redshirt every single one of these guys but yeah there's a lot of good players here man these guys could be really good players in the future that's for sure matt johnson's a stud i'm pretty sure he's a sophomore too really good player tom williams chris bentley richard dealy like we recruited the trenches extremely well for the monarchs man holy cow for georgia southern we got Marvin Browning. Uh, I don't know who else did we go after. I can't really remember. We did not go after those two guys. We couldn't afford to, but we got everybody else that we went after. Uh, actually, no, we did not get Sean Mack, who I really wanted. That sucks, but we actually did pretty decent on signing day. Let's go. I mean, yeah, we scrapped together a decent class. Like, it's incredibly small. Only 12 guys, but this class isn't, like, horrible by any means. Like, all these guys are solid players. Like, down the line, they'll be pretty good starters. Jason Black would even put any points into, but he's still coming here. That's a big pickup. I mean, I'm actually pretty happy with how it ended because I thought it was going to be a lot worse. Let's go. We got a good kicker for the future. I mean, he's decent. Marvin Bradding's really good. David Hall, Stacey Brooks, Brian James. I mean, I'm just shocked that we did as well as we did, honestly. I thought the signing class was going to suck for them, man. It's not that bad. So where are these two schools at? Obviously, Georgia Southern's going to be below Old Dominion. Where's Old Dominion at? They're in the 80s or 60s? The 60s? Old Dominion! Oh, 75. Let's go. I'm pretty sure they signed the top class in the Sun Belt, too. So yeah, pretty successful for Old Dominion and Georgia Southern. They didn't really end that poorly, so I'm pretty happy with how things went on Saturday Day, man. Looking at both teams for this year, they look pretty comparable. I mean, they have around the same 80-plus overalls on them. I mean, clearly, Old Dominion had a better recruiting class and a better offseason, but Georgia Southern's not that far behind. I mean, they were the better team last year. I mean, Georgia Southern has their quarterback for the next three years. I'm gonna have to recruit them a really good one, but this guy, JC French, is solid. 80 overall, 74 speeds, a scrambler, too. Like, their quarterback situation isn't bad. They desperately need some middle linebackers, though. My goodness, dude. 42 overall walk-ons. Ugh, yeah, this team, it's, uh, they need some linebackers, man, that's for sure.
there. Old Dominion, though, at quarterback, they got Grant Wilson this year. He's a junior, so two more years for him, but we did recruit this freshman in here, Terrell Avery. We're going to try and get somebody better, but he's not horrible for the future, so, I mean, their quarterback situation isn't awful. For them, though, we're going to have to recruit some receivers because they only have six of them, and all these guys are going to come back for next year. I mean, there's some sophomores down here that are pretty decent, so it's not all bad, but yeah, we need to get some receivers for Old Dominion, that's for sure. How does the Sun Belt look this year? Southern Miss, you got to do me a solid, dude. You need to turn into, like, the next UCF or SMU or something. Like, I don't want to have to use Southern Miss. Like, they got to do it on their own. That'd be super awesome of them. Arkansas State, same thing. If some of you programs would do it by yourself and not need Tanner's help, that would be fantastic. But Old Dominion's up to a 77. Oh my gosh, Georgia State's down to a 72. Georgia Southern's all the way down here, aren't they? Troy's really good. So is Texas State. Some of these teams got a lot better this offseason. Georgia's so, yikes, yeah, 75, man. We'll see what happens. I mean, they were the same overall last year and they suck. So I don't know. Their records are good, but don't get ahead of yourselves. I scheduled four FCS schools for Old Dominion and Georgia Southern to play. So that means that they're one and two and one and four against everybody else. So not great. Looks like the Sun Belt in general is just not doing very good. I mean, James Madison is doing pretty solid, but they're only a 77 overall. I don't, the overalls of this game just make no sense because like the higher overall teams don't do as well. It just, I guess, yeah, it, it's confusing because Southern Miss is all the way down here. They were supposed to be really good this year. I don't understand it, but the good news is at least we have a team ranked in the top 25, even though I don't think James Madison's very good. For all Dominion, though, they're playing Marshall this week, week 10. We might be able to win this game. I don't know. They're one and two in the sub belt. I mean, Marshall's not that great either, so maybe this will be a dub. We'll see. And for all Dominion's game against Marshall, they have 13 guys visiting. There's a lot of good players here, especially the linebackers. They need some of those, so if we could somehow win this game, that'd be great. And just like last year, we have some guys in the visit that are committed, so that should help out, you'd think, right? Only the first quarter, we're down three, though, which is unfortunate, but I feel confident. Four verticals in the red zone. I feel like this should work. Yeah, it did, right there. Good job, Dumbaw. Quown. That's rather unfortunate. We're up seven, which is good, but they have the ball inside the red zone, so defense clamp down. You can throw a pick for me right here. That'd be great. Come on, Parachuk. I know you want to. Dude, he was... Uh, you could see that from a mile away. That's such bad defense. No pass rush either. What happened, guys? We're down 14. They have the ball in the red zone. This looks... Uh, yeah, this is chalked, isn't it? We're gonna need to get a stop right here. Do you have any chance? Okay, it's a run. Draw. Oh my, you got karate chopped. This, yeah, it's over. Well, even though we got curb stomped, we still convinced two guys to commit. Jonathan Woods and Sean Petway. So that's not that bad, but these two guys down here, Brian Williams and Joey Bolden, they were not impressed. Looks like Marshall won our division this year. The both teams I was controlling, they both sucked. I mean, Old Dominion did not have the magical season they had last year. They were really bad. Two and six in the Sun Belt, six and six overall. Georgia Southern, three and five in the Sun Belt, seven and five overall. Somehow James Madison's still ranked. Did they beat somebody in the non conference or something i don't know why like they keep getting this ranking well they beat ucf louisville and pitt so they beat three power five teams thank you guys keep doing your thing james mess and hopefully i don't have to take you over recruiting this year for old dominions not as good as it was last year unfortunately now it's not bad by any means it's just i really tried to get receivers and it was successful it's just i didn't really get anything else you know what i mean we also picked up two pretty solid quarterbacks so i'm happy about that i mean the class isn't horrible the lowest overall is a 67 and that's really not that bad because that's 67 overall all five years from now probably be like an 85 or something like that so i mean the class isn't horrible it's just not as good as last year's but it's not that far off so i'm pretty happy with it as for georgia southern's class sweet testicles oh my goodness this class is phenomenal dude oh wow yeah okay i don't know what i did differently but i need to try and do it for both teams next year because this recruiting class is insane now the lowest overall for this is a 66 but look at all the 70 plus overalls one two three four five six seven just so freaking good dude way better than the class last year that's for sure who do i want to win the sun belt conference championship this year maybe marshall because i lost them head to head when i tried to play i mean louisiana is the better team my goodness dude their offense is really good number five in the country in points per game i'm gonna guess that louisiana wins but i mean i don't really have a preference oh it is louisiana 24 21 good for them oh they won it overtime too that's cool neither of my squads made a bowl game because all their fcs wins so there's only what four sun belt teams that's it oh my gosh guys we have got a long road ahead marshall versus toledo Marshall wins by three. Good W. North Texas versus Arkansas State. I like Arkansas State in this one. Maybe that's a little biased. And we win by two. Two close games. All right. Louisiana versus Tulsa. This is our best team out of our conference. This has to be a win for us. Come on, Louisiana. Be 3-0 in bowl games. Come on. Yeah, there we go. 14-point win, boys. We're 3-0 in bowl games now. Come on, James Madison. Make it 4-0, dude. You're the only team that's ranked out of the Sun Belt, which I still don't quite understand. Come on. 
Don't let us down. What happened? Oh my god, they lost to the Broncos. Gosh dang it, guys. Players even tied for Georgia Southern. There's like nobody going. Perfect, dude. This team could finally make a bowl game next year. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. But yeah, there's nobody that great leaving. Like some of these players are decent, but nobody groundbreaking. As for Old Dominion, the same thing, but even less, guys. Oh, this is what you get when you redshirt basically your entire team. Now, granted, they sucked this year, but they were good last year when I redshirted all the players. So I don't really know how that works, but like in total, nobody's trained transferring and barely anybody's graduating so that's really good news and no transfers this year i was really hoping that like georgia southern would clean up here because last year they didn't get a single transfer and they lost all those guys but yeah that really is not good i was hoping we get some transfers but none side day strategy for georgia southern is this marvin andrews we really want jr tucker i really want to i just don't have enough points if i had fifteen thousand on sunny day i would just do 5k here here and here but i don't so i'm prioritizing randy roberts and Marvin Andrews because we have a massive deficit for J.R. Tucker and there's two power five teams ahead of us so I'm just kind of like I understand my place and then down here we have a pretty solid lead for Josh Payne Michael Rogers and Terry Paris so I put 500 each of those guys I feel like we might be able to get those three we'll see what happens I really just want these two guys though mostly and our strategy for old to me is kind of the same thing Justin Bell and Paul Singleton we both really want but Jason we just don't have enough points to go after so instead we're gonna go after Mike Fuller who's only two overall lower and we have a big lead for us. so between those three guys we just don't have enough points left to go after any of these guys down here unfortunately but i mean we already have a decent amount of commits so it's not the end of the world if we can just get those three guys at the top i would be happy come on good news for the monarchs good news for the monarchs Okay, man, please, please, please. Oh, gosh, okay, we got Paul. We did not get... Oh, wow, there is not a lot of guys we got, but we didn't go after much. Jason, no! Oh, wow, that's bad. Really thought we were gonna get that kid. We had a good lead for him, and we put 1,500 points into him, but no. We At least we got Justin Bell, though, and Paul Singleton. Those two are really good. So that makes this the class this year for Old Dominion, and, you know, we hit our team needs. We needed linebackers, and we needed receivers, and we did both those things. Now, there's only 12 guys in the class, which is definitely not as many as we had hoped, but the lowest of Overall 67, and I've already told you guys, like, that guy's probably be like an 85 overall by his redshirt senior year, and that's a pretty decent player. And if that's our lowest overall, then we're doing something right. So, I mean, I'm not upset with it. It's not horrible. Joey Bowen's good. Justin Bell, Peter Vincent, like, all these linebackers are solid players. Brian Williams, who looks pretty good athlete. I mean, these receivers aren't horrible. So, yeah, it's not a bad class, but it's not anything, like, stellar. How'd it go for Georgia Southern? Good news. Cow! Gosh, okay. Well, we didn't go after JR, so I need to, like, temper my expectations. Did we get everybody else that we wanted though oh my gosh i think we did we got marvin and we got randy and we got michael i'd even try to go after him did i actually i think i did a little bit i'll be honest i kind of forget who we tried to go after like complete transparency but i mean we got both guys that i really wanted marvin andrews and randy roberts so i'm happy let's go so this is the class for georgia southern and oh my goodness dude, there's a lot of talent here holy smokes dude if only i had this type of class for old dominion it's like these classes completely flipped like old dominion's class last year was insanely better than georgia southern and Georgia Southern's class this year is insanely better than Old Dominion's. Oh my goodness gracious, man. This class is really stinking good. Let's go. Good job, Georgia Southern. Let's go, man. I mean, you got Jordan Atkinson, Justin Wilson. Now they're both Jucos, which sucks, but we got some true freshman offensive linemen. These two guys at tackle will be really good in the future. I mean, there are some really good players here. Good job, guys. I love this class. This class is really good. It's pretty clear which class should be ranked higher. Georgia Southern's, we'll see, is Old Dominion's higher or lower? It should be lower. I'm gonna go high. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be lower unfortunately i was hoping maybe it'd be a little higher but no where's it at 90th uh, it's that great but at least we avoided the triple digits that's nice old dominion whoa i am shocked i did not think this team would be as good as it is right now like this team's definitely better than uh, georgia southern there's no doubt about that but they got a crap ton of seniors oh gosh okay yeah well there might be a little bit of a drop off next year so this recruiting class we get has to be insane grant wilson's back at quarterback and honestly their future at quarterback doesn't look bad you got brown Ryan Williams, Terrell Avery, and Sean Petway. It's not a bad quarterback room for the future, and they're all fast guys. They got scrambling abilities, so they should be set up at the most important position in football, which is nice, but Grant Wilson, please carry them this year. They desperately need some help in the secondary, though, for the future. I'm gonna try and sign, like, 20-ish guys this year. Will it happen? Probably not, but I'm gonna try my best, especially strong safety. We got a lot of old guys here. We need some youthfulness. Yeah, Georgia Southern's roster is not nearly as good this year, but they got a lot more juniors, so I think the team next year for Georgia Southern would be really sticking good, but I will not be in command for that to happen but yeah this team's definitely not bad it's definitely a lot better than it's been the last two years so that's a good thing i mean they'll have jc french this year and next year up to an 89 overall 
I hope this guy is not declaring early. Eh, there's no way he would. That wouldn't make any sense. And then for the future, we got Randy Roberts, a quarterback. So both teams are set up a quarterback for the future, which is very, very important. Just like Old Dominion, though, this team needs some safety so bad, dude. They have this guy named Prince at free safety who's pretty decent. But besides that, they have a walk-on who is not good at football. And then at strong safety, just like Old Dominion, they have a bunch of old guys back here. Tyrell Davis and Mark Stampley the second. I mean, they're good players, but they're just too old. Championship contenders, and this is exactly what I want to see. We're up to an 84 overall at Georgia Southern. Look at this. 16 four years from now. That is what we're looking at. This is my last year, last recruiting class with them. Then hopefully I could just let them do their thing and they'll be okay on their own. That is my hope. Where's the uh, old Dominion? Okay, here we are. Okay, they're definitely not as profound, but they're an 88 overall this year. Holy smokes. 52, 36, and 23. So a top 25 team four years from now, and they still have one more recruiting class. So things are going to plan so far. I think so. Yeah, it looks right so far. Uh, I don't... I'm sorry. I'm just trying to... Eh, this That doesn't seem right. 80... Eh, well, okay. I'm sorry. I'm lost. Third in the country. We're undefeated 11-0. Okay. I... Oh, okay. I mean, it makes sense. I didn't realize how crappy the rest of Sunbelt is. Oh my goodness gracious. Both the teams we're taking over are absolutely balling out. Georgia Southern, not as much as Old Dominion. I mean, Old Dominion is popping off right now, dude. Look at their point differential, 516 to 181. Oh my gosh. Are any of these games close for Old Dominion? I mean, Central Michigan, but... Oh, Texas State was close, but yeah, all the conference games for Old Dominion are light work. They have been killing everyone. Who was Georgia Southern's losses, though? North Texas in the non-conference, they lost to James Madison. Every other game, though, they took care of business, but these two teams have yet to play. That's what's happening this week. But before we get to the game, you guys have got to see these two recruiting classes. I mean, they are absolutely absurd. Oh, my goodness gracious. Old Dominion's is so sexy. I mean, this class is ridiculous, dude. This is what I wanted, though. By last year, I wanted to have a full 25-minute class so they can have this entire recruiting class for the next four or five years and just ride them until the program just continues to take off. It's kind of like a nice little, I don't know, like a jet pack. Yeah, that makes sense because they're basically getting a free lift off with this recruiting class. I mean, it's insane, dude. The coach that takes over is going to be born on third base because this class is so good. I don't have any favorites. This class for Georgia Southern is also insane. They have two quarterbacks that are 78 and a 76 overall. Like, there is a lot of good players here. I don't think this class is as good as Old Dominion's, but they have those two quarterbacks and Old Dominion does not have a single quarterback commit. So I think they have that advantage. But yeah, this class is ridiculous. It's also going to be another full 25-man class, hopefully. It's at least going to be 20 people. But yeah, like I said, these two recruiting classes are insane. Like these two coaches that take over after I leave, they should have plenty of an advantage. And no excuses at all whatsoever because they are set up very nicely. Whew, man, these classes are so good. You guys know, though, this week we're playing Georgia Southern. I'm basically playing myself in a way. Not really, though. I'm going to try and make Old Dominion win. I'm not going to force it. Like, if the CPU beats me, then the CPU beats me. But Old Dominion, we need you to win, dude. I need to get to that playoff. I need to be able to recruit four stars. Oh my goodness. What is Georgia Southern doing? This is such horrible defense. Yeah, it's just way too easy for Old Dominion, man. What are we doing? I see things are going to play so far. I mean, I knew this game wouldn't be easy. We're up seven points, though, in the red zone. We need to capitalize to get seven. R1? Touchdown, please. Dumb bar. Let's go. Quow! Gosh, dang it, Georgia Southern. This wasn't supposed to be so scary and stressful, man. We're only up seven points. I mean, at least we're in the red zone, so just score again and it should be game over. I have belief in the system. Circle? That's the okay. system! Let's go! Good job, Kelby! It's game over, boys. Good W. Somehow conference championship time, and we have a matchup of Old Dominion versus Southern Miss. Old Dominion has the advantage almost everywhere except for rushing offense. And Mr. Lee Corso thinks they're going to win. I really hope they do, because then we'll have a team in the playoffs. So, yeah, please, Southern Miss, let Old Dominion win. So far far, Southern Miss is not following the script, so don't like that. They're rebelling. Not a fan. It's all right, though. Old Dominion's the better team. We got this. Is it a giver? Is it a keeper? It's a keeper. Wilson, man. He's a tall man. Good job, Grant. Excellent, dude. Southern Miss just made it look like they were trying early on. I appreciate that. It does not raise any red flags, but yeah, it looks like Old Dominion is going to win the Sunbelt Conference Championship, and they will be in the freaking playoff, dude. Let's go. 12 seed playing Illinois in the first round. I feel like this is a pretty decent matchup for us. Like, I don't think they're that incredibly talented. I mean, they're Illinois, but clearly they're good as well, so we'll see. I don't know what's happening right now. We're somehow winning, and we have the chance to make this a two-possession game. Guys, Come on, please capitalize. Slant, will the slant get open? Or one of these routes on the left? One of these routes on the left. Oh, what? He went back. Are you serious right now? 
Please don't tell me that's how this half is gonna end. Get to the line! Oh my god, that should have been the easiest touchdown ever, and he like ran backwards, dude. Oh my god. Okay, that's bad. Oh wow. Okay, we're actually up eight points. I don't. Okay, it did not matter that I fudged up before half. All we need is a first turn here, and it should be GG's. Someone get open. Oh gosh, get out of there. Wilson on the run. Wilson! Fast boy! Let's go! <laughs> we win the first round of the playoff on to round two, baby! Play Dabo and Clemson in the next round. We're sitting with house money right now. I did not think we were going to beat Illinois. I knew we had a decent chance, but I'm happy right now, man. I don't care if we lose by 70. Uh, what? I, I'm i lost. I, okay, we're up 19? Are you serious? Okay, yeah, I don't know what's going on right now. Let's just score again and move on to the semis, I guess? Touchdown? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I cannot. Well, I, I'm spe I don't know what's happening right now. This team might just be a team of dust. How did we just beat Clemson by 25? Oh my gosh. Ohio State, who's 14-0. I'm still just extremely confused right now. I, this doesn't even matter if we win the national title because like we need to have a better conference. It's not about winning a national title with a team in the Sun Belt. It's about making the Sun Belt the best conference in college football. And unfortunately, winning this national title does not do that for us. But we'll see. Maybe we'll win. Not a bad start in the first draft. We didn't get a touchdown, which is unfortunate, but hey, we're not going to get a uh, shutout. That's the bright side as long as you make the kick. Come on, Sanchez. Wow, we have a good kicker, too. What does this team not have, man? It's going okay, I guess. I mean, they scored a touchdown, but they had the ball back in the red zone. This could really get out of hand quickly, so defense, dude, now let them get a touchdown, please. Throw a pick, Devin Brown. Or hand it off to a wide open touchdown. Oh, gosh. I am so confused. I don't know. This team must have done some sort of, like, ritualistic... I don't know. Did they sacrifice a lamb or something? Why are we so good? This we're tied at 31. Try to get a stop, guys. I think if they get a first down right here, then we're screwed. I don't know how good their kicker is, but no first downs. Pass. Pass. Defense. Pick. Let's go! <laughs> okay. okay, go get seven. Go get seven. Lazen! Okay, just need to get a field goal rage. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just need one more first down. Circle. Bruh. Oh, no. Uh, no, 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 please, Wilson, get him. Okay, yeah, I'm stupid. I'm so sorry. Okay, so since I threw that pick, just please do not get Moss. That's all I ask, defense. Give ourselves a chance at overtime. Come on, boys. Lol. Are you what? <laughs> Why would that not happen, dude? The way this video is going. <laughs> Okay, it's whatever. Our magic and our picks, he does finally ran out, apparently. GG's Ohio State. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so after that miraculous run, we're up to 38th average rank. As you guys can see, the SEC's at 9. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be so challenging, dude. We're at 6. So, I mean, we're almost into the Power 5. We're definitely the best group of 5 conference right now, which is good. So, for Old Dominion, our miraculous little bumblebee, Chris Burton is transferring to Appalachian State at sucks. I mean, it's not like he's a 75 overall or anything, but he's definitely a solid player, so it's not good. At least Kobe Williams is coming back. He is not going to the draft, and uh, we got Grant Wilson getting drafted. No surprise there. Same with Isaiah Page. Like, these two guys were dynamite for us. As for the graduates, is there much here? Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Yikes. Okay, yeah, there's gonna be quite an overhaul here for Old Dominion. I think that much is obvious, but with the recruiting class they have together, I don't think there should be much of a drop-off for the future, so there's no doubt about that in my mind. As for Georgia Southern, I think you guys know they had a lot of juniors on their team. So JC Fretch is coming back. So is Marcus Sanders Jr. That is very clutch. But yeah, they really don't have that many guys graduating. Like, it's not like nobody's leaving, but what? Eight guys? Nine guys? Like, it's really not that much. The team next year that's going to carry us in the Sun Belt is going to be Georgia Southern. Their team next year should be insanely good. Little swap, it looks like. Appalachian State's Wesley Wilson is coming here. So we had that guy, that receiver, transferred to Appalachian State, and we get Wesley Wilson to return. I'll take that trade 10 times out of 10. Let's go, Wes. Signing day this year for both teams is really not that stressful as you guys know we have most of our commits we really want this chester hood guy though he looks insanely good shane hall brendan Lowe, and tim ingram like if we don't get all these guys i'll be pretty upset because we should i mean the only guy i'm kind of scared about is shane hall maybe we're not putting enough points into him but i feel fairly confident and then for old dominion brian harrison that is the guy we really want nine thousand points into him only a thousand for kent because we have a massive lead and then louis johnson we really want this kid as well so i mean in theory i should be able to get all seven of these guys if you combine both both. I mean, we'll see what happens. I don't know if I'll be that lucky, but I hope so. I forgot about the transfer we picked up, so I only had two scholarships left. So I just chose Brian Harrison and Louis Johnson. It looks like we got both for Old Dominion. That's good. Sadly, though, for Georgia Southern, we did not get Brendan Love, but we did get Shane Hall and Chester Hood. So I'm pretty happy about that. And Tim Ingram, as you guys can see. So we did not get all six, but we got five. You guys have already seen both classes, all the guys that are in it. There's studs on both sides. I'm curious, are we in the top 50 for both? Oh my gosh, yes, we are. 30th for Old Dominion and 20 seventh for Georgia Southern. Let's go.
Wow! Georgia Southern's up to a three-star T Prestige, and Old Dominion is up to a three-star. I wish they were like four or five, to be completely honest with you, but they are on their own for now. So, best of luck to you guys. You guys have a massive, massive, massive runway. Do not fudge this up, please. My two old teams look like they're on top of the Sun Belt as of right now. They gotta keep doing their thing. James Madison's actually a lot better, so that's good. Anybody? Oh my gosh, Texas State is awful. I should have chosen them. I didn't realize they were so trash. Well, this time I chose three teams. I'm gonna confuse myself with the recruiting and stuff. I'm gonna try my absolute best not to, but the fact that I got the those two teams that good in three years gives me confidence that I can get three teams good in like three or maybe even four years. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and do Coastal Carolina, Louisiana Monroe, and Georgia State. All three of them are very trash. They're not as bad as Texas State. I wish I would have known, but at least they're a three-star team prestige. So we'll see how things go. But yeah, these three teams are my focus right now. Around the midseason mark, Arkansas State's up at the top. Looks like Georgia Southern and Old Dominion both lost the game, which sucks. But Old Dominion still rank good for them. But Georgia State all the way down here at nine. Oh, gosh. Coastal Carolina and ULM are down here as well. ULM's 0-3 in the Sun Belt. Oh, man, they're bad. This week, though, ULM, I think they're the Warhawks or something. I don't really know. I think that bird is a hawk. I'm pretty sure. But either way, we're playing Troy... I don't think we're going to win, but I'm going to try. And for this game against Troy, ULM basically has their entire recruiting board visiting for this game. So it's pretty important that we win this and have a good impression for the recruits. Because if we don't, I'm afraid we may miss out on some guys. Because they got some good players in here like Thomas West and Chris Grant. Like, we got to win this game, dude. R1. Watch out. Martin. Let's go. Okay, good start. Things are kind of falling off a cliff, I guess you could say. We're down two, and they're at the goal line. I'm going to need the defense to get a stop right here. No touchdowns, guys. Pressure. Okay, he's on the run. Catch him! Smith! Are you... That's... Yeah, this team's bad. I guess you could say there's still a chance, but if we do not convert this fourth and seven and score a touchdown, there is no chance. Come on, Murphy. You have dreads. Square. A circle. Wrap it. Oh, my... God. That's not even who I... Wa Oh, yeah, this did not go well. Arkansas State holding down the fort for the sound belt, dude. Oh, my goodness. They're a top five team right now. Georgia Southern's ranked. So is Old Dominion. So we got three teams ranked in the sound belt. Are there any other teams ranked? No, but there's a lot of teams that are going to be bowl eligible this year, which should be good. Because I think last year, the year before, there was only four teams, which was pretty underwhelming. But the three teams we took over, they all sucked. Georgia State 1-7 and seven in the sound belt. ULM 2-6. and six. Coast Carolina 2-6. and six. Just not good at all. As for the recruiting classes for all three teams, Georgia State and ULM are doing great, but Coastal Carolina, I did not do very good. Now, we have like a four and a five star commit, and we have a lot of guys living on our board, but I only like recruited quarterbacks and running backs for Coastal Carolina, which was stupid. So I'm not very happy with how it's gone for them, but ULM and Georgia State, they have really good classes right now, dude. I'm happy with those. As you all can see, though, our conference prestige is an A minus. Look at this, dude. Average rank 23.2. We are moving up in the world. We're number three out of all conferences right now. Think are going in the right direction. It's just the three teams I have control over right now are really weighing down the average, but the Big Ten's only five spots ahead of us in the SEC. Oh my gosh, their average rank is 11th, dude. That's double R's. It's going to be challenging, but we are definitely making some progress because we're ahead of the Pac-12 right now and the ACC. It's time for the Sun Belt Conference Championship. Now we got Georgia Southern versus Arkansas State. It really doesn't matter who wins this game because I think we're going to have one team in the playoff no matter what, whether that's Old Dominion, Arkansas State, or Georgia Southern. It looks like Lee Corso has Arkansas State winning, but as you guys can see their overall is just not nearly as good who did georgia southern lose to am i allowed to look at that i'm curious because they have two losses they lost to boston college who's four and eight that's humiliating they also lost to old dominion who's also ten and two interesting i'm gonna simulate this bad boy i think georgia southern's gonna win but i really hope arkansas state wins that would be good for us and oh they won in overtime an absolute barn burner holy cow 47 to 44 let's go arkansas state they're definitely gonna be the playoff we actually snuck in old dominion as well at 10 and two they're gonna play texas tech in the first round oh they're on the same side of the bracket i mean i doubt they're gonna meet each other but arkansas state's also playing florida state that should be interesting so it really doesn't matter if either of these teams win because we already had old dominion make a run last year but i mean it'd be nice well there's not as many teams bowl eligible as i thought there would be there's only five i thought there'd be at least six maybe there's some fcs wins i really do not know but the main matchup is arkansas state versus florida state and then obviously old dominion versus texas tech i don't know which game oh texas tech's not that good only a B plus. We could win that game, Old Dominion, and then Florida State A minus. They're not that great either. I mean, we could potentially pull off two upsets here. I would not bet money on it, but we shall see. Come on, Arkansas State. You went 13-0. You ran the table on the Sun Belt. 
Make us proud. They lost by 10. At least it was close. It's all up to you, Old Dominion. You made a run last year in the same position at the 12 spot. Come on, do it again, please. Old Dominion. Oh, God, they lost by 18. Well, so much for that. For the rest of the bowl games, Georgia Southern, they were the best team in the Sun Belt. You, you guys do that in the preseason. They just destroyed UTEP. Like, they should have made the playoff, but they decided to suck on the field. So that's their fault. Uh, Southern Miss beat Colorado State. Good job, guys. And then Marshall beat Ohio. So, I mean, we went 3-2 and two of bowl games. It's just the two playoff games we did not win. We got curb stomped by double digits in both. Well, the good news for these three teams that absolutely sucked this year is they really don't have many guys leaving. I mean, there's some solid players here. Like, they had a good quarterback and a good running back for Coastal Carolina, but there's really not that many guys graduating. And it's the same thing for Georgia State. Like, obviously, you're gonna lose some guys to graduation, but there's barely anyone. So, I mean, these three teams next year, they should be a lot better, especially losing a Monroe. Holy smokes! They're only losing five guys. The best player they're losing is an 85 overall. Yeah, they should be really good next year. Transfer time and yeah! Yes, dude. Coastal Carolina picked up some kids, Zach Reed and Maurice Thompson. Now, he dealt with this Joe Cabral, guys. He's not very good, but these two players aren't horrible. Like, we'll take both. Same thing for Georgia State. Now, they took Coastal Carolina's transfer, Ernest Johnson, which I'm honestly okay with. He's not that great, but they picked up Will Hubbard. Holy, okay. This guy's a 75 overall running back. This guy's actually a pretty solid player, and he's from the Sun Belt, too, so at least we're keeping our best players in the conference. And then losing him on row, we are not taking Brett Atkinson. He is not a very good player, but they picked up Nick Jones from Texas to 70 overall, so all three teams picked up pretty decent players out of the transfer portal, so yeah, transfer season this year is a resounding success, let's go. So this is our strategy on Saturday for these three teams, ULM and Georgia State are in really good spots, they should be able to get most of the guys they're going after, but Coastal Carolina, I just did an awful job, there's only like quarterbacks and running backs on their board, we'll see if we can get Aaron Cabs and Jonathan Troder, but yeah, they are screwed right now, that's my fault. But let's just get the sucky class out of the way, are you serious? They lost Aaron Caps and Jonathan Troder, both guys that we really needed that's really bad at least you picked up daryl kramer and brian jenkins but yeah this class is incredibly small man Ugh. glass half full is that coastal carolina didn't have any position needs except for quarterback we got two really good ones now the reality is this is probably the smallest recruiting class i think i've ever signed in a video so yeah that is really bad but there's plenty of good players so like these four guys would be really good at the top but next year's class we have to sign a boatload of guys man holy cow how'd it go for georgia state did that get gary burgess that that sucks. Nick Hicks, we got destroyed. Holy cow. Clifford, no. Kevin, no. But we got everybody else. James Ruffin, Danny Tyree, Marcus Landry, Adam Hayes. So not bad at all. So that makes this a class for Georgia State. I need some offensive linemen and we did not get a single one. We recruited basically the entire defensive side for Georgia State's class. It's really good though, which is nice. We'll have a good defense for the future. But next year, we need to get some big boys on the offensive side. I mean, there's some studs up here though. Eric Johnson's really good at four-star. James Ruffin, Keenan Robbins, like they recruited defense really well. Holy Holy cow, yeah, this is actually really good. Good for Georgia State. How did it go for the Warhawks? How did it go? What, Lance? Oh, my. We had three guys not go anywhere when we had a massive lead for them. That is so bad, dude. Did we legitimately get anybody? Oh my goodness, at least we got Seth Jacobs, but that's really it? Oh wow, that's, yeah, that's bad. So that makes this ULM's class, it's only 13 guys, it should have been a lot more, like, we got shafted on signing day for basically every single team that we're in control of right now. This entire class, though, is basically all athletes, which is pretty interesting. I didn't realize I did that, but, I mean, at least there's a lot of versatility in this class. Oh my gosh, yeah, there is whole, every single player is an athlete except for Seth Jacobs. Who signed the highest ranked class? Probably Georgia State, ULM's at 77. Is Georgia State up here or no? Also, Carolina's at 46 because they signed a five-star, but they only have six commits. I could knock it over that. That's actually so funny. <laughs> Where's uh, Georgia State at then? In the 80s or 90s then? What? They're not all the way down here. So are they all the way up here? Did I miss them? They gotta be ahead of Coastal Carolina then. Oh my gosh, I think they are. Yes, they are! Let's go! Georgia State's at what? 39th in the class? Two four-stars? Let's go! They needed the most love, and they got the best class out of the three. So, I think things worked out pretty well, I'd say. I mean, yeah, they went three and nine, and they got the best class, so that's good. Looking at these three teams, they look pretty comparable. I think Georgia State has the better quarterback, but, like, ULM is a pretty good quarterback. So does Coastal Carolina. So, I would not be surprised to see these three teams make a big jump, because quarterbacks are super 
super important in this game, as they should be, and they didn't really have the many players graduate, so I'm excited. Felicia and Amon really, really need some offensive linemen. Now, they do have some really good young guys, like a 69 overall here. Chris Heath is pretty good. So is Brian Oliver, Eric Arrington, and Brandon Grigsby, but there is just not much depth on the offensive line for them, so we need to recruit that. And then save for cornerback, like, they have some good young players here, like Thomas West is really good, but they desperately need some more help here, so yeah. We gotta make sure we recruit secondary and offensive line for ULM. For Georgia State, you guys can probably already take a guess what they need. They need offense because their entire recruiting class was basically full of defensive players. So yeah, Georgia State, we need to recruit offense. Defense, probably not so much, but they need offensive line pretty badly too. So gotta make sure we hit up the trenches for Georgia State and some skill positions on offense, but we should not have to recruit much defense for them. And then Coastal Carolina, they need everything. They only signed six commits. I'm just gonna go through their entire roster. There's a lot of old guys. There's not many young guys. Now the good news for them is they do have some really good young quarterbacks. Like we don't have to worry about that. Christian Bell looks like a stud. So does Daryl Kramer. And they have an insanely good running back, Lee Green. So they have the skill positions on offense figured out. It's just every other position they suck at. So we got to make sure we recruit everything. How's the conference looking this year? Probably a step in the right direction. Georgia Southern and Old Dominion are both still top 20 teams. Arkansas State's pretty good. They're only an 84 overall, but they're up to a four-star T prestige. Is there anybody else that's been like elevating? I mean, Marshall's pretty solid. Anybody else? I mean, James Madison's falling off a little bit. Louisiana, 90 overall. Okay, so that's nice. But yeah, Coastal Carolina, ULM, and Texas State are not very good. Neither is Georgia State. I mean, they're up to an 83 overall, so they're better than last year. But yeah, the bottom of the conference isn't that bad. It's not like it's falling off a cliff. I'm just glad that we're in control of Coastal Carolina because they need some love right now. So we got to take care of them. Did not have this on my bingo card. Coastal Carolina is 7 1 and 4 0 in the Sun Belt. I don't know how because that. Okay, yeah, I'm confuzzled, but okay, I guess that's all right. I mean, I don't really know. Marshall's doing okay, says so Old Dominion and Georgia Southern. I was kind of expecting a little bit more out of both them. I mean, they're a high overall. It's just they lost to teams they probably shouldn't have lost to, it looks like, which is unfortunate. And after Coastal Carolina's horrible recruiting class last year, this year we had a ball with them on the trail, and we did just that. I mean, this recruiting class so far is phenomenal. They already have nine commits, which is three more than they had all of last cycle. So, yeah, really happy about that. Two quarterbacks, Mike Taylor, Alvin Rich, got really good linebackers up here. Uh, Wesley Johnson, Terrence Vogel. Like, I think they have a very good good chance of having the best class out of any of the three teams I'm using right now. So really happy about that because they need it, man. We shall see if Coastal Carolina can keep this magical season going. I mean, gosh, their field is so freaking beautiful, dude. I love the blue turf. It's such a beautiful shade of blue, too. I just freaking love it, dude. I'm so excited for this. Should we just run this right at him and just hope that we're bigger and stronger, more manly? Let's hope. Come on. Bigger, stronger, more manly. That's what I'm talking about. Good job, whoever that guy is. Joe Harden, he just ran over the linebacker. That was dope. Okay, I don't know what happened, but I can't say I'm surprised. As you guys know, I don't know how Coastal Carolina is 7-1. They're only 79 overall, so it looks like they're running out of pixie dust. We'll see if they can get a stop right here. It's a keeper at the quarterback. It's a pitch to the outside. Mm. Yeah, there's no one out there. They got the ball back. If they score a touch right here, I think we're chalked, guys. So defense, if you're going to do something cool, now's the time. It's kind of the same situation as last time at the goal line. I don't like our odds here. Bentley! Oh, I missed. Dang it. This one's over. As expected, Coastal Carolina fell off a cliff. I mean, it was only a matter of time. I'm curious how the rest of the Sun Belt finished, though. Marshall was pretty solid. Old Dominion, no surprise there. Southern Miss is pretty good. South Alabama somehow is up here. I don't quite know how. Georgia Southern's not even ranked. They went 5-3 and three in the Sun Belt. Oh, man. There's no teams that are going to make the playoff this year, which is not a good thing at all. The good news is, though, that every team we're taking over right now has an insanely good recruiting class, especially Georgia State's. Like, that class is phenomenal if you combine their class with the class they had last year on defense, and then Coastal Carolina has a buttload of commits, so everything I wanted to do so far this recruiting cycle has been accomplished, so I'm happy about that, that's for sure. The sub out Championship features two teams we have yet to play with this video, which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, I'm just gonna treat it as a good thing. I don't know how Southern Miss managed to uh, win their division, because they're only a B-, minus. they're not very good, so I'm expecting good old Marshall to win this game, and Mr. Lee Corso thinks the same exact thing, so we shall see what happens, and they lose in overtime, so yeah, there's definitely no chance any team is going to make the playoff this year out of the Sun Belt, which is not good. The Warhawks are playing Nebraska that guaranteed Rapel. This is kind of a fun matchup. What are the other bowl games that I have for my users? We got ugh, Coastal Carolina versus Toledo. I mean, that's interesting, I guess. I really want to play a Power 5 team. Ooh, Tony the Tiger Frost and Flakes Bowl against Pitt. I think I'm going to choose to play the Warhawks versus the Cornhuskers because I want to try and beat a Big Ten team. We'll see where we stack up. Well, I was hoping this game would be competitive and we do not even have 100 yards of offense yet. This has been an absolute slaughter. If we do not get a stop right here, I'm afraid that we have zero chance. It might already be that we have zero chance. We'll see. Come on, Gates. 
Do something dumb. Why is he so open? Yeah, this game's over. Gosh dang it. Such a horrible performance, guys. How the rest is about doing the bowl games? By far the most teams that I've ever made it. Coastal Carolina got killed. You guys already know we got killed. Georgia State lost too? Oh my gosh. Southern missed one. Good for them. Troy beat Boise State. Georgia Southern beat Rice. Marshall beat... Oh, wow. Did we have a winning record in these bowl games? I think we did. Or maybe it was 500. But it's good to see that we had, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine teams make a bowl game this year. That's progress. The conference prestige is down, though, to a B plus, which is unfortunate. It means we lost a little bit of our average rank. But we're still ahead of the Big 12 and the ACC. But where's the SEC Yeah, They're at 14, so we're only 12 spots away. I mean, there's definitely some things that need to happen. Like, we need to get a competitive team in the playoff every single year. But we're getting closer, man. Players leaving time for Coastal Carolina. They got some decent players leaving, like this Traylon Slade and Blake Botta guy. But really not much else that's, like, high quality. And they have no transfers, too, which is a plus. Same goes for Georgia State. They're losing their really good quarterback, Bryson Harrison. First round draft pick. Good for him. But besides that, really not much. And there's no transfers, which is really stinking good. And then the same thing for ULM. No transfers. Let's go. Now, they're also losing their quarterback, who is really good to the draft. That's a little concerning. But really, there's not that many players graduating and none transferring from any of the three schools. So that's awesome. Georgia State, man. I really think they might be able to win a national title. With the recruiting class we had last year and the one we have this year. And then this kid, Wayne DeLoach, is coming in. I mean, there's no other transfers from either of the other three schools. Or two schools, I should say. Coastal Carolina and ULM. M, but dude, a 77 overall true freshman is transfer from Clemson. Like, Georgia State, man, they're gonna be yoked. Being at Georgia State, for signing day, this is our strategy. Shannon Patton, we should be able to get. Ray Daniels, I really want, so we're putting 5,000 points into that kid. Travis Baker, should be able to get, only putting 1,000. Then Garth Thomas, it's kind of up in the air, but we're gonna put 2,000 there because he's an athlete. Marley Bell, we're not gonna go after. It's kind of the same thing with Matt Manning, but Matt Andrews, we definitely will because we have a big lead there. So, I mean, I honestly feel pretty good about getting every single guy that we want for Georgia State, so I'm happy about that. For Coastal Carolina, it's pretty cut and dry. We have a pretty big lead for a lot of good players like Jack Smith, Sean Browning, Rodney Lawrence, and John Smith, and then Brian White down here. Like, I'm just putting 2,000 points on all five of these guys, and truthfully, I think we should be able to get all five pretty easily, so yeah, I feel pretty good about Coastal Carolina and Sunny Day. And finally, for ULM, we really want this Joel Vincent guy. We're battling USC for him. We'll see how that goes. Dominic Brown, we have a little bit of a lead for him. I'm kind of scared about Alabama. We'll see how that goes. I feel pretty good, though. These three guys, I'm just not going after. We don't have a big enough lead, but Randall Williams, we do. So I'm putting a thousand points into him. I realistically think we should be able to get all three guys that we want. So we'll see what happens. Come on, Garth, you freaking jerk. He didn't come to Georgia State. I think that's a Cougar or a Panther or something like that. Ty e. Wayne, same thing there. That blows. We also missed out on Marlon Bell, but we didn't really push for him. Same thing for Matt Manning. We didn't push for him either. We did push for Matt Andrews, then we got him. And Travis Baker, Ray Daniels, and Shannon Patton. So I'm pretty happy about that, especially Ray Daniels. I really wanted this kid. We beat Penn State head to head. So that makes this the class for Georgia State. And oh my gosh, dude. I I, oh man, if you combine this offensive class with the defensive class they had last year, it is bonkers, dude. I think, like I said earlier, if there's any team that's going to be set up for the future best, it probably will be Georgia State. Now, we're still going to be with them for one more year, so next year's recruiting class could be the ultimate decider, but this recruiting class for them is remarkable, dude. Like, all these guys are true freshmen, too. Like, none of these guys are Jucos. Like, we have a five-star athlete from Santa Barbara committed. What the heck, dude? We got so much talent for Georgia State. How did things go for my other little hat? In Coastal Carolina, we really needed some good things here. Brandon! Oh my goodness, you jerk watch. John Smith, we did not get Randy Moss. We didn't get Marlon Bell. Oh, that's another guy that uh, was on the Georgia State board. But we got Sean Browning, Jack Smith, Rodney Lawrence, and Brian White. But we did not get Gerard Hunter. So honestly, we should have got everybody we wanted. It's just Brandon Hicks, for some reason, just does not want to come here. His loss. So that makes this the class of Coastal Carolina, and you guys know this had to be the biggest class out of any of the three teams I'm controlling right now after last year. They only signed six guys. This year, they got 21, so 27 in total between two classes is really pretty solid. It's not horrible, especially if you factor in the red shirt. So yeah, all in all, I think it's a pretty good class, man. Like, it doesn't have as much quality, but there is a ton of quantity, and there's a little bit of quality, too. Like, some of these guys are really good. Franklin Gonzalez, Terrence Vogel, Sean Browning, Jacob Robinson. Like, they got some good players. And finally, my war Hawks, you got absolutely bent over by the court Huskers in the bowl game. We did not get Charles Taylor. We don't know. We lost him to USC. Yeah, oh my gosh. At least we got Dominic Brown and Randall, but I mean, I really wanted Joel Vincent, dude. This guy's gonna be a stud. That sucks. I mean, it's alright, though. It's still a really good class. Like, this team really needed cornerback, and we got a lot of that. They also needed offensive line a little bit, which is why I wish I would've gotten that kid, but USC's freaking jerks, but yeah. This class is definitely solid. I don't think it's as good as the other two, but it's not horrible by any means. So I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, these corners are insane, dude. Like, they're going to be really good in the secondary for the next few years. So that's good. Who is ranked the highest? Probably Georgia.
Georgia State, I'm guessing. ULM's in the top 25. Good for them. Where's Georgia State at? Coastal's at 13, and Georgia State's at 6. This is what I'm talking about, dude. Oh, where are the teams that I'm not using, though? Like Old Dominion, Georgia Southern. Please tell me they're not like in the, like the 70s. Old Dominion's at 24. That's respectable. They're up to a freaking five-star team prestige. That's so good for us. And then where's Georgia Southern? Please just be in the top 50. Like, don't fall off a cliff, Georgia Southern. Where are you at? Oh my gosh, Georgia Southern. 51. I mean, they signed two four stars, which is good. They're also up to his four star T prestige, too, sir. They're not like really falling off that bad. So things are going pretty well, I'd say. How is the Cowboys looking this year? Old Dominion is insane. If they do not make the playoff, I will be sad. Georgia Southern, they're a little bit worse, but they're also playoff material. What about other teams that I've not done yet? Oh, Marshall's bet. Yeah, none of these other teams are picking up the slack. We're a lot better this year, though. ULM is Troy. Yeah, oh gosh. Georgia State's a lot better. Appalachian, Louisiana. Some of these teams, man, we're going to have to probably do another batch of three teams because the teams outside of the two teams we've taken over have really not elevated at all but i mean coastal carolina is a little bit better so is georgia state and ulm so these teams are definitely improving and the two teams we took over earlier are playoff material it's just the rest of the conference is just eh. eventually though it looks like coastal carolina is going to be a top 20 team 48 next year 30 in the 19 but as you guys know this is our last year with coastal carolina ulm and georgia southern where are those two at speaking of that oh georgia state i meant i got them mixed up that's my fault but oh my goodness 15 in two years 20 next year and 12 so they should be in good hands for the future where is the other one ulm you dirty dogs oh my goodness i did not think they'd be ahead of georgia state but they are 24 next year 10 and then four so top five team three years from now that is very very clutch and then georgia southern's up here but oh three years from now it looks like they're gonna fall off a cliff but they're gonna be a top five team two years from now and then where's old dominion are they really that far up oh old dominion yes they are okay 11, 5, 14, and 11. So they're basically around a top 10 program right now. So Old Dominion's doing fine. Georgia Southern, they're falling off a little bit. But the three teams I'm taking over right now, they're doing really good for the future. So things are looking okay. Well, Old Dominion and Georgia Southern have both done their part. They're number one and number two in the country. Sucks they're both in the same division, but they both should be able to make the playoff this year, which is nice. But Georgia State has actually had a pretty solid year. Anybody else? I mean, ULM has sucked. So has Coastal Carolina. They're all the way down here, which is unfortunate. But I mean, all three teams we're using are definitely getting better better it's just the record doesn't really reflect that for two of the teams unfortunately but yeah georgia state is definitely having a good season this year which is nice and honestly for all three recruiting classes this year they're basically the same thing i try to get as many commits as possible i didn't really care about the quality i just wanted as many recruits as possible so the coach that takes over for these three programs is a nice nucleus for the next four or five years so none of these guys are gonna go to the draft early which is nice or most of them shouldn't for georgia state they got to play marshall this week though and marshall's like really bad they're four and seven so this has got to be a win i want to try and finish the season with three teams in the top 25 and if we do not win this game that will not happen okay well we're trailing at least it's early on though so we just need to get seven we got this square tight window it worked let's go tim cobbs out of way stud not gonna lie it's a little closer than i would have liked but i mean we're up four points we're about to be up seven at least i think their kicker's decent this should be an easy kick i mean it's only like 30 yards yeah, there we go all right up seven at the half now this is so much more like it i don't know why we waited so long to do this but i'm a fan either way just score again it should be ggs circle oh that's gonna be a touchdown isn't it yes it, it, oh my goodness, that guy's fast. Tim Joseph, some athleticism there, but oh, but yeah, it's game over, man. Good W, boys. Georgia Southern beat Old Dominion 38 to 31. Thankfully, they're both gonna make the plot, which I'm very happy about. But conference championship time, it means Southern miss again. Oh my goodness, dude, that's right. Because none of the teams that I had this year really did that good, except for Georgia State, and they're in the same division as Georgia Southern and uh, Old Dominion. So I'm just gonna simulate this. Actually, let's let's see what Lee Court. Yeah, it's pretty clear. I mean, Georgia Southern should win this by a landslide. If this game is close i'll be very sad yeah one by 19 good job georgia southern randy roberts out of georgia southern i definitely recruited this kid but unfortunately i don't remember him at all but oh my goodness dude am i looking at this right he only had a thousand six hundred eighty passing yards being over a thousand yards rushing as a quarterback did georgia southern with a triple option i am lost i don't know what's going on right now but he won the highest but good for him georgia southern's the one seed. it's a really fortunate year for them because there's no like sec or big 10 team that went undefeated but old dominion's playing unc in the first round honestly i think old dominion should win this game pretty easily i mean they're definitely legit you guys saw their overall like they're both really good teams oh lee what are you doing buddy as you guys can see a plus a plus i mean there's a legit world where old dominion plays georgia southern again in the semis i mean we'll see what happens but i mean this should be a win i really want to win this game against acc come on yes 30 oh my goodness dude 41 to 13 beautiful old dominion let's go i think it's safe to say georgia southern definitely has the harder matchup they're playing florida who's 11 
out of three navy i just don't think old dominion will lose we'll see though oh my goodness dude this game is incredibly tight end of the game need to convert this two point here georgia southern no okay that's bad randy the heisman winner did not make the play okay i'd say kick time please get lucky come on come on please bounce off somebody's helmet somebody piss your pants gosh dang it yeah this one's over, dude. If they didn't miss their extra point, like, they missed their extra point after they got the second touchdown, like, they might have had a chance to win the game in overtime, but that's just, oh, that's annoying. Old Dominion versus Navy, I'm not gonna jump in for this one, because I just don't think this game should be close. Like, A-plus versus B-plus, come on, Old Dominion. Come on, you gotta represent the Sun Belt. Um, what happened? Did we win? Oh my goodness, 51 to 28. Okay, yep, I'm clapping. I like that. We're gonna see if they can get revenge against Florida in the semis. Good job. Oh, Dominion, let's go. Oh, yes, dude. Holding down the fort for the Sempo. Getting revenge for Georgia Southern. They're up 21. They're about to make this field goal. At least I hope so. They should be up 24. This game's gonna be over, dude. Holy cow. I did not anticipate this. I honestly thought they'd lose, but no, man. They dominated. Let's go. Oh, here we go, dude. South Belt versus SEC in the national title game. Old Dominion versus Texas. I am so excited for this. Let's see what you got, Monarchs. Oh, man. The offense for Old Dominion has really sucked today, dude. They only have 10 points. I'm afraid of Texas. Oh, my God. Who is their quarterback, dude? Guys, the size of the Statue of Liberty, dude. If they get one first down, we are screwed. You guys know it's gonna be a run it, that much is obvious i just hope they do not keep with their quarterback that guy is scary oh did we stop him we did let's go so there's still hope boys i need some magic to happen now come on monarchs don't throw a pick please please what happened oh my mom i said don't throw a pick and what do they do they throw a pick this game's over gosh dang it dude conference prestige we're still at an a minus i mean we're third just like last year 25th ranking the sec is just oh my gosh dude they're just too good average rank is eight i mean that's oh it's gonna be so challenging dude graduate time and thankfully for these teams especially coast carolina to even make a bowl game this year they really don't have that many good players leaving now some of these guys are decent like 80 overalls but like these guys are not anything great i mean walter bentley's pretty good but he's only a seventh round draft pick and then for georgia state brett sears is going to the draft fourth rounder he got hurt this year that sucks cedric france is coming back which is nice but kind of the same thing with coastal carolina like there's some good players graduating but it's not like anything too challenging to overcome i mean the recruits that we've been bringing in the last couple years would be definitely better than these guys so it's not the end of the world not a good situation here though for ulm they have two of the best recruits we got last year with them transferring Derek cantrell and also joe whitmore that is not good at all at least Lee Everett's coming back for another season. He's a really good running back. Pat Tidwell's gonna get drafted. Good for him at receiver, but there's really not that many guys graduating for ULM. So besides those two transfers, which I'll be honest, really sucks, they probably should have a really good team next year. So good for the Warhawks. For Coastal Carolina on Saturday day, it's Scott Hayes. We need this kid. He is so good. Ohio State's trying to be a jerk and take him from us, but this guy is a game changer if he can join the program. So Coastal Carolina really needs him. We're not gonna go after Elliott Davis because we just don't have enough points left. But Thomas Barr and Blake Reyes, we should be able to get both those guys only putting a thousand points there. So honestly, it's just Scott Hazer bust for Coastal Carolina, dude. Like, please let us get this kid. For Georgia State, their entire class is basically already signed, except for Spencer Cook and Doug Grant. I mean, if we don't get both these guys, I'll be incredibly shocked. I mean, we have a big lead for both them, and we're putting a crap ton of points into them. So we should be able to go two for two for Georgia State. For ULM, it's pretty similar to Georgia State. We should be able to get Mike Pierce, Paul Edmonds, Andy Hughes, and Doug Morris. It's really just this Ben Gant guy that I really want 5500 points we're putting into him but we're in a battle with west virginia and arkansas state so we'll see how it goes but yeah i mean we should be able to get most of the guys we want for all three teams yes dude coastal carolina got scott hayes elliot day they basically got everybody they wanted except for jonathan run i don't even think we went after that guy so coastal carolina w man georgia state got both guys also a w and then ulm got everybody except for andy interesting he's going to washington state but we got ben gay who i really wanted that was really the most important guy so that's good so these are the three classes this year and they're all pretty similar i mean they have around the same guys committed around the same overall guys so i think coastal carolina probably has the higher end talent but as you can see georgia state and ulm both have more commits and coastal carolina didn't even make a bowl game this year so i honestly i'm pretty happy with how it shook out so where are these three trips Blitz at ULM's at 36. I really think I should go up, right? Coastal Carolina, yes, they're at 26. Are you telling me Georgia State's in the top 10? Maybe. 
Maybe not. Maybe I went the wrong way. Georgia State's at 16. Let's go, dude. Okay, so Georgia State probably has the better outlook out of the three teams I took over. And it looks like Old Dominion also had a pretty solid class, top 25. So that's really good for them. But yeah, Coastal Carolina's class and ULM's was not horrible. So you three are officially on your own. I know ULM and Coastal Carolina did not have much success with me at the helm, but they will have plenty in the future. The three new teams I'm going to be taking over for the next three years or so, South Alabama, Troy, and James Madison. I did not realize that Lee's and it was as bad as they were. They're only 75 overall. I wish I would have taken them over, but if I can get these three schools like a top 10 or top 20 level, that should help us out a ton because Coastal Carolina is going to be good for the future. So should ULM, Georgia State, and then Georgia Southern's falling off a little bit, but Old Dominion's basically a top five team every year. So things are looking pretty good, but these new three teams that we just picked up, we've got to do really good with because if we do not, we will be screwed. It's week 11. It looks like Old Dominion lost a game. I thought they'd run the table. Who'd they lose to in the conference? They lost to Georgia state but they ended up beating tennessee's and arizona state so clearly oh and virginia tech good for old dominion man they're doing their part but that loss to georgia state honestly should help out the rest of the conference be more competitive so i'm kind of happy about that ulm's doing good so is coastal carolina so every single team that i've taken over so far this video are in the top five georgia Southern, coastal carolina ulm georgia state old dominion now the teams i have right now south alabama troy and james madison they all suck so if we can get these eight teams rocking and rolling then we should be in a really good spot as for troy this week they're at home playing Texas State, and Texas State has a good record, but they're the same overall, so honestly, we could win this game, and we desperately need it for Troy, man. And for Troy this week, they have 10 guys visiting for the game. Now, some of these battles are tightly contested, like Tariq Hull and Ted Rogers, so we gotta make sure we win this game, and honestly, it's pretty winnable, so if we can pull off this W, I really think that we can get some commitments, man, and we need it, because this team has been awful this year. Texas State, you are not helping out the cause for the conference right now, guys. We're down three, and they're at the goal line. It's just not looking very good. This would be a great time for a pick six or something they keep with the quarterback and there's not a defender in sight goodness gracious thank you trey did not throw in the towel they're only down six and they would just score a touch right here so we need to make that happen they got a tall quarterback too he's got a cool arm sleep i like that oh it's touch right easy they're not even trying to defend the slant man Let's go. Well, so much for the comeback, dude. Troy's down seven down, and they have the ball in the red zone. If they get a touch right here, I think it's GG's. I'm run committing, so I swear if this Wildcat still works. Okay. I, like I said, I ran commit, and freaking gosh, dude. Okay, we really wanted to win this game, and it did not happen, dude. That sucks for Troy, but I mean, good for Texas State. They're seven and two. I mean, it didn't matter that much, I guess. We still picked up Bo Williams, but Spencer was not impressed. I don't really blame him. We also picked up David Anderson and Jeremy Doyle, so pretty successful visitors weekend for Troy, man. Good for them. Not expect Georgia State to win the Sun Belt this year, but it looks like they're in first place at the moment. I mean, Old Dominion and ULM were both pretty good, but they lost non-conference games. We should be able to get three teams in the playoff, it looks like. Georgia Southern's at 11, ULM's at 13, Old Dominion's at 8, and Georgia State's at 3, so yeah, we might have three chances to win a national title this year. I'm kind of curious, what's our ranking at? Oh my gosh, we're on top, dude. 16! The SEC fell off. They're all the way at 18. Oh my goodness. Okay, so if we win a national title this year, we might be done because I just need to finish ahead of the SEC, which we already did, and then on top of that, we need to win a national title. Now, that is a big question mark, because I don't know who's going to be able to do that. I just really hope one of the three teams that makes the playoff is able to do that. That would be awesome. So, who ended up making the conference championship? It was ULM versus Georgia State. Two teams I literally controlled just last year, so they took some pretty big jumps up. Oh, gosh. They're only B-pluses? That's pretty concerning, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what the odds are of winning a national title with either of these teams, but honestly, I don't know who's going to win, because they're both basically the same exact overall. I mean, maybe Georgia State will pull off the win. Maybe you all pull off the upset. No idea. And who wins? It's Joel. My God, they won by 30. Georgia State might be one of those like 93 overall teams that for some reason beats every team they play, including the 99 overall. So we'll see, man. But yeah, Georgia State's obviously a tough team to beat. But before we get to the plot, I do need to update you guys in these three recruiting classes that we have as of right now. James Madison class is really good with quality and quantity, but Troy's. It's not good because they went three and nine, but their class is by far the worst of the three. So yeah, that is really unfortunate, but it's not horrible by any means. We're just going to have to have really good classes the next two years. But we'll see. Maybe we'll win a national title this year. I don't know. All right, guys. It's up to you. Georgia State, Georgia Southern, and Old Dominion all made the college football playoff. You got Georgia Southern versus Nevada. Georgia State's got a bye. And then Old Dominion versus NC State. We have three cracks at this, guys. We have three opportunities. And thankfully, all three of you guys are on the same side of the bracket. So, I mean, we have a decent chance. We'll see. Old Dominion versus NC State. We'll do the eight versus nine first because I don't know how far Old Dominion's going to go. I mean, they are the highest overall team we have, but they got to play USC if they
if they win this game. I mean, they should win this game pretty easily on paper, even though Mr. Lee Course says NC State's gonna win. I got all the confidence in the world in my Monarchs. Old Dominion, come on, please do not let me down. Old Dominion, Old Dominion, Old Dominion, domination, 40 to 7, I like that. That gives me confidence for the next round against USC, I'm a fan. Let's make it two for two, Georgia Southern. You are one of the teams I took over earlier as well. They have a massive advantage, though. That is a B minus. I don't know how they made it. Okay, it looks like Elite Corso's got us. I cannot help but agree. I don't know how this team went 11 1. We should dominate this game, honestly. And do we? Please tell me we did. Oh my god. What? We lost by 23? Oh my goodness, they were a B minus. That's okay, that's bad. Okay, well, fudge. We already know about Old Dominion's matchup. It's LSU versus Georgia State. I don't really know how to feel. I'm sure LSU's really talented. I'll be honest, I think our best chance is Old Dominion. You guys saw their overall. It's like a 97 or a 98. They're insanely good. It's just somehow they lost two games the regular season. Either way, though, man, I just need one of you guys to move on to the semis. Just give me some hope. Oh my gosh, Georgia State, they're up five points. Just do not let LSU score a touchdown. That's all I need to worry about. Just no touchdowns. Come on, defense. You got this. It's a handoff and balls. It looks like it's all going to come down to this final play. The odds of this are just so low, man. Oh my gosh. They had the win and they just choked it, man. And yeah, they got sacked. This game's over. Gosh dang it, man. This could have been a win. Old Dominion, you dirty dogs. We're up 14. We really just need like a touchdown or a field goal right here and it should be game over. It's a handoff to the outside. Does he have a lane? Does he have a lane? He does. Let's go. Nice cutback. Pat White. That's game over, dude. Just domination. I did not think this would happen, but I'm happy it did. Let's go. Old Dominion versus Michigan. I'm sure Michigan's like really talented, but Old Dominion's a 97 overall. I'm really impressed with what they did against USC. I don't know how they lost two games, so I really think they have a legit shot at winning the Natty, so let's go out there and make it happen, Monarchs. Old Dominion, I love you, dude. You guys are balling out, man. We're up four points against Michigan. They just need one first down, and it's game over. Come on, guys. Clutch up. One first down, guys. Just one. Just one. Hand off to the outside. 44 in the clear. 44 in the clear. Let's go. Yeah. On to the daddy. Let's go, Monarchs. Exactly what I wanted. Old Dominion could get revenge for Georgia State. Honestly, I think Georgia State should have won that game. They kind of choked against LSU. They had a lead late. They couldn't get a first down. Then LSU scored a touchdown with like a minute left. So I'll be honest, man. I know it's in New Orleans, LA, the Caesar Superdome, but I really think Old Dominion is going to win this game. I'm excited. Awesome start, Old Dominion. It would have been nice if you guys could have gotten seven instead of settling for a field goal but if we make this they'll be up two possessions and 10 points so please guys don't choke i mean it's right up the middle you'd hope that the kicker could make this i mean i probably recruited this kid i really don't remember at all who this is please good kick they go through yes it did all right 10 point lead guys good start well their offense finally started to move the ball not a good situation i mean we're still 10 points just trying to stop your defense let's mitigate damage back there drop it back step it up on the run oh my he's fast Nah, uh, well, Alfred scored. Kind of mixed feelings. It's late in the fourth quarter. We're down two points, but all we need is one first down, and then we should be able to make the kick, right? I think so. Yeah, please, just one first down. Is it going to be a run? No, not a run. It's a pass. Got forever to throw again. The offensive line is doing a great job. Is that first down? Yes, it is. Okay, I think that's field goal range. Just make sure we do not fumble or throw an interception, and I think it'll be up to our kicker to win this game. Please don't be a touchdown. Please don't be... Okay, I guess that's fine. All right, I'll take the touchdown. Just do not get mossed. Come on, CPU. I don't know why we're not playing, like, really deep defense. We're only rushing three. What are we doing on defense? Okay, well, at least we know it's the last play of the game. Hey! Chestnut checkers, let's go! We win the daddy! In Old Dominion, I love you forever, dude. Not only are we better than the SEC now, as you guys saw with the team rankings, we win a national championship in the same season. So whoever their coach is, I have no idea. It might still be the guy that I had there. I have no idea who it is. Thank you. If you enjoyed, click to be on the screen where I did a 20-year rebuild of South Carolina. I think you'll love it.